blue steel. Hello again fellow plant lovers and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Josie aka Sir Plants Lot. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram if you wanna keep up to date on all of my shenanigans that I get up to. And believe me, there are a lot. <laughs> Today I'm in a little bit of a sassy mood and I feel like shaming some plants because they just attract pests like no other and I feel like it's about time that somebody calls them out on it because they need to start respecting us, you know? We are the breadwinners in our households and if it wasn't for us, these plants would not survive. Sometimes even with us the plants don't survive, but that's a story for another time. So today I have compiled a list uh, of plants that I think are pest magnets and that I think you should avoid if you want to avoid pests as much as possible. I've also gotten your guys' input on Instagram, so thank you so much for participating. And if you would like to be involved in my videos in the future, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like comment down below because I need that engagement you know what I mean it gets lonely in the comments because nobody interacts with my videos and it makes me very sad and I just want to talk about plants don't you want to talk about plants anyway so let's get into it so the number one plant on this list is Alocasias, in particular the Alocasia Friday, as was suggested by one of you. I never actually got to the stage where my Alocasia Friday had any leaves, so I can't really personally attest to this, but I have definitely had uh, spider mites on some of my other Alocasia. So for the Friday, it makes a lot of sense that um, they would be prone to spider mites because the Friday leaves are very, very thin, and I feel like the thinner the leaves, the yummier they are for pests. I don't, I don't really know if there's any actual science to support that, but it's it seems to me that like the thinner the leaves, the more danger you are in. <laughs> and with alocasias in particular, um, this is one that actually did have spider mites um, and it was quite a bad case. But the reason that spider mites like alocasia so much is because if you look closely at the leaves, they have all these grooves and things uh, on the foliage and also like the leaf just has a weird texture where it's a bit lifted here than it is compared to the rest of the leaf. So when it comes to spider mites, obviously they like to live in webs and that's how they reproduce, that's where they lay their eggs. So when you've got such a nice textured structure like you do on the alocasia leaves, that is honestly like heaven for them. It is especially true for alocasias that have like proper proper leaf texture like this alocasia dragon scale. If you can see it has all of these ridges every time there's a vein on the leaf and that's exactly the perfect hiding spot for spider mites. They just love it and I hate that they love it but I do still love alocasia so I'm still gonna keep having them. One of the people that actually submitted their plants to this Instagram sticker said that their variegated alocasia has to actually sit on the opposite side of the room in a corner away from all the other plants because it is such a pest magnet. <laughs> so um, I don't know how common these are in the US, they definitely aren't common over here, but if you have a variegated alocasia then uh, be very careful. Honestly for me the number one challenge is just trying to keep alocasia alive even without pests because I don't know man they just they drive me crazy like this one has two leaves and this one's already on its way out it started yellowing off so like if it had pests I don't think I would have a chance at all because it's quite a challenge even without spider mites to look after them to be honest this one needs watering <laughs> probably why it's not doing so well. <laughs> the next genus on the list is 
Hoyas. From my experience, the Hoyas are the meal of choice for one pest in particular, and that is mealybugs. This one in particular did have mealybugs itself. Luckily, it hangs on its own in the conservatory away from any other plants, so uh, we didn't have a full-blown infestation. And they were quite easy to get rid of as well, so like, mealybugs aren't the worst, in my opinion. You might disagree with me. And there are two particular Hoyas that I don't actually own personally that uh, are known to be pest magnets, and that is the Hoya Cornosa Compacta and the Hoya Linearis. So because Hoya grow in uh, kind of waxy and hard they oftentimes have a lot of crevices uh, where the mealybugs can hide especially on this plant you can see that it's quite a full one and you can barely see the soil at the top so there's plenty of hiding spaces uh, for the mealies to um, hide but that is especially true for the Hoya Cornosa Compacta uh, honestly like one of the reasons I don't have it is particularly because it is such a magnet for mealybugs because it has so many crevices and like honestly I feel like even if you checked the plant top to bottom chances are that you would not find all of the mealybugs because there are just so many hiding spots that it's just I don't even want to deal with that I don't want to have to stress about that in my house so that's one reason I don't have it the other reason is that um, they're just very slow growers and I don't have time for that <laughs> and that's similar for the Hoya Linearis actually because the Hoya Linearis um, kind of has like a like a v-shaped leaf almost you could say and uh because the strings are just going in all sorts of directions and they are quite small there is a lot of hiding places also especially between the petiole and the actual leaf would you still call it a leaf I don't really know, but I'm gonna put a picture here to demonstrate so that I can see what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to steer clear of mealybugs, I would not recommend that you get these Hoya, or if you do, then I would make sure to check them very thoroughly, very frequently, just in case. The next plant you probably already own, because if you're anything like 90% of the plant parent population, you have definitely at least one type of this plant. And and it is the Monstera Deliciosa. This one is so freaking big that it's literally pushing me out of the chair, but I'm gonna take the spotlight back because this is my time to shine. <laughs> Monstera Deliciosa, a thrips magnet. Honestly, the worst of the worst, but unfortunately that is what we are dealing with here. <laughs> Two out of the three times that I had thrips, I found them on my Monstera Deliciosa. I don't know why this plant in particular is so yummy to thrips. I mean, I don't know, like it's not really that different from most plants in your collection, but some, for some reason, oh, there's a leaf here. <laughs> but for some reason, they are just really, really attracted to it. And um, if you've got quite a bigger one like mine, or I mean, this isn't like a giant specimen or anything, but if you do have a bigger one, I would make sure to check the undersides of the leaves fairly frequently because that's always where you hide them. Or if you find like, um, kind of grayish brownish uh, spots on the leaves that almost look like like someone has scraped the leaf off or something that might be an indication that those are thrips on there oh new leaf hello so cute <laughs> Yeah, I, it's a real shame about this plant because honestly, we love a good Monstera, don't we? And uh, like I said, most of us already have one in our collection and it is just such a shame that most of the time when you do have thrips, they do attack your Monstera Deliciosa. The next plant that is very, very notorious for having pests, whether that be thrips or spider mites, usually thrips more likely than spider mites, is the Philodendron Maricosum. Luckily, I guess mine is too ugly to never have had thrips yet. <laughs> It's just so unattractive that not even thrips want it and honestly, I'll take that. 
I'm okay with that. I can't really tell you why uh, pests like these plants so much. I guess one reason could be for spider mites anyway, is that again, you have this raised texture on the undersides of the leaves. And I guess because they're multicolor as well, it might be easier for them to, well, not hide, but it might make it more difficult for you to actually spot them. Oh my God, this new leaf is gonna be amazing. <laughs> That is so exciting. I'm <laughs> um, sorry, I, I know I keep getting distracted by new leaves, but that's what you signed up for here. <laughs> And the same goes for another plant that I don't actually have in my collection and that is the philodendron melanochrysum. So it's a very close one to the varicosum except that the leaf shape is a little bit different. But that is one that a lot of people mentioned as well that they attract pests a lot. Next we're going to talk about the plant genus that is probably most prone to having pests as a whole and that is Marantesiae, so prayer plants. I'm gonna start with Marantes first and then move on to Calatheas and show you some specific examples, so let's do that. <laughs> when it comes to Marantes, these two plants would be the plants in my collection I would be the most worried about. <laughs> the first time I had thrips I actually had it not on this plant but I had it on a regular Maranta Curtiviana that I had back in Prague and uh, that was actually like the first ever plant that had thrips and from there on it spread to all of my other plants. <laughs> Marantas are prone to having not only thrips but also spider mites. It is very 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 popular among spider mites as well. Sometimes both at the same time which is just mm, that's just perfect combo. <laughs> but yeah, same theory here. I think, you know, the foliage is nice and thin. It looks very yummy. And especially on the speckled plants, like this one, uh, you can see that it clearly has some variegation marks. And this one, the Maranta light veins uh, also has some sort of variegation. So it would be very, very difficult to spot thrips on these because they their color is very similar to these veins or to the variegation on the variegated Maranta. And one plant that one of you guys actually submitted was the Maranta Lucanera, or I call it the Maranta Fascinator. I don't know if both are correct or if they mean something different. Let me know. And I do have to say I kind of agree because uh, this one did have a bad bout of spider mites for some time. And with this one, it is so, so clear why they would love this plant because again, the texture on it is quite prominent and you've got these spaces between the ridges same on the other side, which is just a perfect, perfect spot for spider mites to create their webs on. My friend that submitted this one was actually, every time I mention anything related to Marantas, where I'm like, what's your favorite Maranta? What's your favorite prayer plant? She's like, Marantas, but without the spider mites. And you know what? That's completely valid. Next up is a genus that is probably one of the least favorite ones ever. <laughs> One of the reasons being because they attract pests so much. The fact that Calatheas are such pest magnets is honestly so heartbreaking to me because they are genuinely one of my favorite geni genuses. Because, oh, just those leaves, those patterns, it is just so beautiful. The best in particular that we're talking about is again mostly spider mice but also thrips. I have had both on my Calatheas. Um, this one in particular, not the exact same plant, um, the one that I'm talking about is actually dead, <laughs> but this plant in particular, this is the Calathea white star. White star? Yes. I had one previously and uh, my flatmate was looking after it for me and uh, it died presumably because of a spider mite attack because I later found spider mites on all of my other plants and when I had spider mites, spider mites? What? I did not have spider mites on my plants. I wish. But when I had spider mites on my plants in this house, they concentrated on this one like crazy. You can actually still see, let me put this down. 
you can actually still see the residual. Oh, can you actually see that? Basically, there's residual damage on the underside of the leaves and you can also see it at the top where there's like these little dots that are really messing up the pattern, which is a shame. But um, this one is definitely a spider mite favorite. So I would be very, very careful about yours if you have one. It is super beautiful, but you gotta pay a price for that beauty. <laughs> one of the probably most notorious Calatheas that is known for being very alluring to pests is the Calathea White Fusion. Now, this one, spider mites, I find this to be a delicacy. Honestly, they love it so freaking much. I think, again, um, this Calathea is a little bit different to most of the ones that I've shown you because the leaf shapes on these ones are really irregular and, again, it creates like a little texture kind of, you know, this is kind of like a shell where it's just, again, the perfect space for spider mites to make webbing. And uh, you can especially find these on the undersides of the leaves. Let me just quickly check whether we have spider mites. No, we're good. <laughs> anyway, definitely very prone to pests and just in general, they're very difficult to keep alive. So I would probably just steer clear of this one, just to be sure. And lastly, this is another type of plant that most of us already have in our collection. And it is sadly Prothos. That's right, unfortunately, but it is what it is. <laughs> so Pothos definitely thrips. Number one problem, thrips. Second one, spider mites. Never had any other issues with pothos, but definitely thrips. This Mandula pothos that I have here, I don't really show this plant off just because it looks kind of awkward. Like it only has one long vine and I don't know. To be honest, like I'm kind of mad at this plant also because the last time I got thrips, they were on this plant. So I kind of despise the plant for that. Have you ever done that? Have you ever despised the plant just because it dared to get pests because I find that extremely rude. This Mandula pothos had thrips. Um, I don't know why it's so tasty, but it is definitely, definitely a thrips favorite. And the same goes for, where is it? And the same goes for this neon pothos, which is also very prone to thrips. Um, I think with these plants in particular, it's because a lot of the times they have a lot of leaves, a lot of foliage and it's impossible to check every single leaf to see whether you have pests or not. So in my theory is that a lot of the times you only start noticing pests when the plant starts declining. Why, which point it's sometimes a little bit too late. <laughs> but yeah, we know them, we love them, but they kind of suck in that aspect, but we will still continue to love them because look how cute. I love this plant so much. Oh, love me a neon plant so good so that's gonna be it for this video you guys let me know if you have any pest magnets in your collection or if any of the plants that i've mentioned are in fact pest magnets in your collection also if you enjoyed this video please give it a like comment subscribe follow me on instagram hit the notification bell all of that good stuff and i'll see you here for my next video bye